Thank you, Professor Kusre. Our next item is a first at the GBF 2015. I invite the first student to be here on the podium, Chirak Shetty, fourth year electrical, to talk about an activity at, on the campus which fuels students' creativity, the Tinkerer's Lab. Chirag. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Um, we have spoken a lot about startups, about innovation, etc. I think it wouldn't be complete without listening to a message from currently enrolled students of IIT Bombay who are actually going to make this thing actually happen, right? And I'm here as a student representative to bring to you that voice and tell you a story about what happens when you give students 700 square feet of space, some cool tools and machines to play with, and some freedom. Well, this is what happens. Immediately within two years of establishing a lab, you have people thronging there to make whatever they think is possible because they want to be the next Steve Jobs, they want to start the next HP or the Tata or the Mahindra. They bring their passion, be it music or sports or whatever, mix it with the kind of technology that they learn in this institute to put it into actual play. But it is all tinkering. A brief history about the lab itself. This is the lab, Tinkerer's Lab. It was established by the generous donation of 1975 batch and by a strong support from our director, Dean S.A., and the electrical department, which provided the space for the same. What is the Tinkerer's Lab? Well, it provides mechanical tools that are generally required for prototyping purposes. It shows, like, gives you electrical tools, software tools, like if I want to learn a really expensive algorithm, then I would need a GPU or good RAM, etc., which I can't buy for myself. And most importantly, whiteboards, sketch pens, glues, and other things which are so necessary for innovation. Whom is it open for? Well, this, we have faced a lot of questions for this. Well, it's open for any student of IIT Bombay, 24 hours a day. You can be working on this lab alone and for any legitimate tinkering that you want to do. The lab was inaugurated in 4th of Jan on 4th of January 2014. That was a pilot one in the third floor of main building by our director. Within three months, a permanent space was established wherein we put up all the equipment that have come and it was in, uh, inaugurated by P. Chidamram, then the scientific advisor to Prime Minister. And since then, over 1,000 students have used the lab across the departments, year of study or academic program. And for very diverse projects, right? From hobby tech, be it your course project. I mean, it's interesting that many people, whenever a professor gives a course project, they used to do simulation because it's easy to do by sitting in your room rather than find a permission or a right time to go to the lab and make something. But now you find a few groups who says, oh, if I can simulate it, I can as well make it. And you can find people making course projects, the actual things, right? And the last participation on the freshman batch who have come into the institute since the lab started two years ago. Well, why did it succeed? The answer is simple. There are many people who code in the institute. We have brilliant coders. And there are even more brilliant coders outside the institute. The success to this is easy accessibility. You, all you need is a laptop with internet connection, and then you can explore the world, you can create the app that you want, you can create the website that you want. But imagine, I'm a second year student, and I think I can make a circuit board which can work in a brilliant way to solve some of the problems. I want to build a particular prototype, be it wood or metal or the kind of things from the workshop that I've learned in my first year. The problem is, I begin working after 10 p.m. in the night, after my academics and play and food. I like to work on weekends. I go on up to 2 a.m., 3 a.m. working when I'm really engrossed. And I don't have a professor under whose lab I can work. Where do I go? Period. Your idea ends there. But now we have a lab which tells you the only requirement that you need to fulfill your idea is your willingness to do not the constraint of resource or time. Within two years, we have had a few projects. For example, the Bamboo Lab project, which was shown here, was an idea just to say, OK, we are making solar lamps, yes, but you're making it out of plastic. It's still not clean. Why not make it out of bamboo? Such ideas were just ideas. They came into the lab. They turned it into a product, and they're presenting it today. Not just that much, right? The last project 
you see on the right is my own project. My professor said, I'll guide you theoretically, etc. But where will you actually make this? All I needed was an oscilloscope, which cost 50,000. Of course, I couldn't buy it just for the project. We sat in Tinkerer's lab, made it within three months, and it became one of the 17 exhibits to be shown in ISCAS conference, International Symposium in Circuit and System, which we attended this summer. It's a great value addition to me for whatever purposes in the future. It would have been absolutely impossible because we struggle. We are ready to work hard. It's not that we are lazy, etc. We need a proper resource, right? The second thing, we made a very formal presentation for this, but some of them said, oh, you're big boys. You should be solving real life problems. Don't make toys. And hence we made a good amount of slide to tell why placefulness and tinkering is something very necessary. Let us give an example because we all like to, right? The best example is this, when to these two gentlemen took a scotch tape, put it over graphite, removed and got a single layer of graphene, they went on to research and win a Nobel Prize for this. The press release for Nobel Prize says, playfulness, one always learns something in the process. Do we need more? Yes, the blue box. This was the blue box of which made Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs meet. This was not just tinkering, it was illegal in the first place to allowing people to make the calls, etc. Even better, Harley Davidson. They just attached a motor to their motorcycle called motor bicycle and didn't realize that it can be a business until someone other friend said, oh, we want that toy too. Or the HP founders, right? They made right from urinal flushers to harmonica tuners, etc., just tinkering, hoping that, okay, this is what people will need one day. But everything involved playfulness and tinkering. Let's not look at the West. Let's look what happens here. A guy who was there in Tinkerer's lab, one day opened a 50K worth oscilloscope just to see what is there inside. Yes, he put it back again, but he went back and made an oscilloscope, which here he is showing to his, his peers in one of the messes. And then there are a group of freshmen who call themselves Tech Senti Janta in the lingo of IIT Bombay, who decided, Oh, we look at so many things, but I don't understand how this microphone works, or how the hard drive works, or how my keyboard works. How can we be a good engineer ever? So they collected all of the electronic waste, which is many lying in the institute, and brought it and opened it. They document it, put it on the website so that everyone else can see. This is the hard disk which is open, which has beautiful engineering, which involves everything from material science to aero, like aerodynamic design of the hand and everything and people enjoyed it. It has continued ever since in Tinkerer's lab. This is when they opened a keyboard. Last week, we opened a printer. Next week, we are opening LCD screen, which is all junk, but we see great value in it. People take it to different dimensions. People make a virtual reality thing. People make a braille reader, which is the first one. And then they attach it. Skate enthusiast made a skating thing with, with, with breaks so that a person who is learning it for the first time feels confident enough to do it. This leads to community building. For example, if I'm an electrical engineer, when would I ever speak to a civil engineer about the kind of works that he's doing? No, I play with him. I may be dancing with him, but we never do it. But as an engineer, if I see one of my friends working on something and I don't understand it, I cannot stop myself from going and asking him, boss, what are you doing? And this is the kind of thing that Tinkerer's Lab does. It brings people from various ages, from various departments together, and when you see things happening very organically, it just sparks magic. But that's not enough, right? You have to go beyond tinkering at some point of time. And that is where we need the faculty, we need the expertise of alumni. We're very thankful that the alumni of 1975 batch just established for us a network of people who have expertised in their particular field. They come and hold free workshop. For example, last weekend, we held uh, Professor Prakash Randekar, he held an Arduino workshop for the freshmen. But we wanted it for freshmen, but people from all across the departments came, etc. And if you're there on Monday in H7, a freshman will be teaching his hostel inmates, which include seniors, of how to use Arduino after having attended this. This is what we do. We establish mentors who go and multiply, who teach to others. Others feel jealous. Oh, you know something that I don't know. And this is how things progress. 
Not just that, we thought people should appreciate the engineering that they are learning. And hence, we had Professor Jayan Sabnis come and speak about his exploration of aerospace engineering. We had Amol Gokhale sir speak two weeks back about materials that defend and things like that. When people start appreciating the engineering that they learn in their classrooms. The next question is what do we want? From the industries, there have been many companies which have given us development boards, etc., to tinker. This is what we expect from the industries to come, hold workshop. Intel had held a workshop on design thinking for us. What do we expect from alumni? Well, anything that you give is a great value addition for us. Your expertise, whatever ideas you want, or even if you just visit Tinkerer's lab and appreciate the efforts that students are putting in, it's still a great value addition. Faculty, they have been super, super supportive of this. Some of them are offering that, okay, we will just come some evening and teach you how to do hands-on electronics, right kind of soldering and things of that sort. And this is a great value addition in an institute like IIT Bombay to make the kinds of things that we have been talking here happen. To make the things like Make in India, we need to make, start making. But we need to start small. You can't be like saying, oh, we want the product right from the beginning. And tinkering is the thing that plays it. So with this, I end. See you all in Tinkerer's Lab. Thank you. <laughs>